Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we're going to be talking about some new tweets from Elon Musk on full self-driving as well as Tesla insurance. We've got a couple other stories, and then I do want to follow up on a couple of key points from earnings that I've been seeing discussed pretty broadly and perhaps being misinterpreted, so I wanted to offer some perspective up on those. Third day of declining stock prices in a row for Tesla stock today, down 2.5% to $677 even. That did compare to the Nasdaq slightly up, though it was mixed throughout the day. It ended finishing up two tenths of a percent. All right, so we've had a pretty active Elon on Twitter. Since earnings yesterday, he was willing to again share his estimated timeline on the next release for the full self-driving beta, which we haven't now seen for quite some time. So obviously they're working on version 9. Tesla owner Silicon Valley here asking any wisdom on limited version 9 FSD beta release. Elon says, quote, probably two weeks, end quote. All right, so there's our most recent timeline. Obviously, Elon had some mixed comments on this on the call. He said that FSD beta continues to make great progress, but then he talked for about three paragraphs here about how difficult of a problem this really is, and then just kind of left it at that, though he did say he was highly confident that they'll get it done. But I don't think anyone listening to that really left that part feeling optimistic about the timelines. Perhaps that was a factor in why Elon decided to respond to this. The last update that we got on timeline, I believe, was back in mid-April. Elon said, hopefully next month for the beta button. Of course, he also said similar thing, hopefully next month in March as well. We're not going to see that. But this would be relatively aligned with the last communication he gave. It is important to note here that Tesla owner Silicon Valley did specify the limited release of version 9. So I wouldn't expect from Elon's response here, though it's not 100% clear if he is defining it the same way the Tesla owner Silicon Valley is, I wouldn't expect a full self-driving beta button in two weeks but rather version 9 going to the group of a couple thousand beta testers, judging efficacy there, and then hopefully getting to the FSD beta download button for everyone that has actually purchased FSD. Or at least in the US, obviously other regions would follow after. Elon saying here probably a few months for Canada, and hopefully EU this summer. So take that for what it's worth, obviously those timelines haven't been all that helpful in the past. I would note that Elon did change his usage from hopefully to probably, so maybe that's a good sign. And he is still very excited about version 9. He's saying here, quote, Gating factor is achieving and proving higher safety with pure vision than with vision plus radar. We are almost there. FSD beta version 9.0 will blow your mind, end quote. So we'll see. Obviously, it's easy to point out those missed timelines, but Elon has been pretty consistent now for quite some time about his optimism on the progress that they're making and the direction that they're taking. And as I said before, it's not just Elon. Andre Carpathy on that Robot Brains podcast was also very positive, more positive, than I've seen him up until this point in time. Next in the Twitter feed, we've got Elon responding to a question on Tesla insurance. Jason asking, is there any updated timeline on Tesla insurance coming to Florida? Elon says, quote, hopefully later this year for several more states. Insurance is different for almost every state in America and regulatory approvals take time, end quote. So he doesn't say specifically Florida, but obviously as one of the bigger markets, I'm sure Tesla is trying to prioritize that as well. Previously, we've heard reports about Illinois, Texas, and Washington state in terms of Tesla setting up entities in those states to get Tesla insurance ready to go. As with Tesla energy projects, though, it's not exactly clear when those things happen, so it's probably ongoing in other states. Elon here saying several, three there would be the minimum for that, but I'd guess others in the works as well, as Elon seems to imply here. Next up, we've got some interesting supply chain news from Pierre Farragou of New Street Research. He says here, Tesla breaking news, quote, ST Micro silicon carbide revenues this year will be $550 million versus $450 to $500 million expected only a few months ago. They are sole supplier to Tesla, and Tesla is greater than 80% of their silicon carbide. Tells you how confident Tesla is about this year. $550 million silicon carbide could well be 1 million inverters. And he adds, quote, sorry my mistake, they said well above $550 million, end quote. So we'll have to defer to Pierre there, I don't know much about this area of the supply chain. I would say that it's possible that this company has increased their prices against Tesla, and maybe that's one of the reasons that the revenue is increasing, rather than unit increases driving that, though it certainly could be that, or some combination of the two. Pierre is one of the few analysts that has been on that 1 million target train for quite some time now, though. And of course, it does seem to be what Tesla is targeting per the details of that leaked conference call, and this could be some supporting evidence in favor of that theory. That actually leads us nicely into some follow-ups on Tesla's earnings because I've seen this being repeated quite a few places that Elon somehow updated guidance for a million vehicles this year on the earnings call, and I strongly disagree with that assessment. That line of thought stems from Elon's response to the dojo question on the earnings call, where he's discussing training and the need to collect a lot of data. So let's listen to what he says about the size of the fleet. Then dojo is kind of the training part of that. So... Um, because we're, we're, we have over a million cars 
And, you know, perhaps, you know, next year we'll have 2 million cars in active use um, providing vast amounts of video training data that then needs to be digested by, by a very powerful training system. Okay, so he's saying right now we've got over a million cars that are in use. Tesla's delivered about 1.6 million vehicles so far, but only about 1 to 1.1 million of those are hardware 2.5 or above. Okay, so 2 million next year from a million now. Well, that must mean 1 million this year, but it just doesn't really work out that way. First off, next year is super vague. We already know that Tesla has guided for 750,000 plus vehicles this year based on that plus 50% growth rate. Obviously, next year will be even more. And he doesn't say at the start of next year, he just says next year. That could be at the start, that could be at the end. And clearly, if Tesla delivers 750,000 this year, it's inevitable that next year at some point, they'll be above 2 million cars total collecting this data. So that's all Elon is saying here. Even if you do interpret it a different way, as in saying, okay, 2 million vehicles by the start of next year. Well, we're already through Q1. And again, right now they're at maybe 1.1 million of these vehicles so far. So to get to 2 million by the start of next year, they'd have to do 900,000 over the next three quarters. So if you were to interpret it that way, which I don't think is correct, then you'd be actually saying that Elon is saying 1.1 million vehicles for this year rather than 1 million. While that might not be impossible, I think it's clear that Elon is not intending to give that as guidance. So obviously a bit semantic here, but I did see that in quite a few places and no one really challenging it, so I wanted to share my thoughts on that. The other point I wanted to follow up on was Elon's comment on 4680 battery production saying, quote, and basically this is just a guess because we don't know for sure, but it appears as though we're about 12, probably not more than 18 months away from volume production of the 4680, end quote. So I think most of us perceived this as a little bit of a delay. I think that's kind of how I covered it in my initial reaction. But looking at it a little bit more closely, it may not actually be a delay at all. So if we go back to battery day, after Drew and Elon got done walking through all the individual steps, the things that they think they can improve on, they summarized it by talking about the range increase, the dollar per kilowatt hour reduction, the reduction in investment per gigawatt hour. Recapping what they think they can do, Elon said, quote, and now to be clear, it will take us probably a year to 18 months to start realizing these advantages and to fully realize the advantages probably it's about three years or thereabouts, end quote. So battery day was last September, Elon there saying probably a year to 18 months. I think we know by now it's probably better to assume towards the tail end of that timeline. So 18 months from battery day would be the beginning of next April, a little bit less than 12 months from now. So again, probably safer for us to assume more towards the 18 month time frame. but if Tesla is in high volume production in 12 months, that would fit with the original timeline they gave at battery day. And Elon at battery day said, start realizing these advantages he didn't say volume production, so this may actually be a comparison of a couple of different things, though my assumption would be that you'd have to be in volume production to begin realizing these advantages. All right, last couple of things here. Elon has been continuing to tweet about FSD as I have been recording, so just to check in on that quickly. Elon says, quote, FSD display version 9.0 will show actual probability distribution of objects, true mind's eye of the neural net. This is so cool, end quote. At first blush, it may not be entirely clear what that means exactly, so Holmar is kind of adding some clarification on this, saying, quote, I think what Elon Musk is saying is that the visualization will look smoother. Rather than the lines moving around, you'll see a representation of the uncertainty as a probability distribution somehow, so it should inspire much more confidence in the system, end quote. Elon replying to that, saying exactly. So I do have to wrap up there. Maybe we'll see some more tweets from Elon tonight. One thing to keep an eye out for for tomorrow, we could see a Starship SN15 test flight, Sounds like it's more likely to be early next week, maybe Tuesday as the most likely date, but definitely close enough to start keeping an eye on for those that are interested. So with that, we'll wrap it up for today. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, April 30th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.